Hi guys, my name is Kat and you're watching Plot and Plans. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about the top games on my wish list for E3 2018. I've been following the Electronics Entertainment Expo since 2006 when I bought my Xbox 360 and I've always really enjoyed finding out what new games are going to be coming out in the coming years by seeing conferences and demos throughout the uh, show. Anyway, these are the games that I am hoping for and looking forward to. I've broken them down into three key categories. The first category are games that I am pretty sure that we are going to either see or hear about at the show. The second category are games that I think we might hear about and that I'd be happy to hear about at the show. And lastly, we have a couple of just crazy guesses that are probably not going to be there, but that would totally thrill me if they did show up. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. First, we're going to talk about the games that I'm pretty sure are going to be making some type of an appearance. The first thing that I'm fairly confident about is the fact that Nintendo is likely going to have a Smash Brothers themed Direct for their portion of E3. I'm really excited about this. I had a lot of trouble with Smash Brothers on the Wii U because I didn't really care about the controller in that console very much. But I do like the controller for the Switch, and I've been looking for reasons to buy the Switch. So I'm pretty sure that I would definitely prefer to play Smash Brothers on the Switch over what I was experiencing on the Wii U. I remember really enjoying Smash Brothers on the GameCube, and I was kind of surprised at how much trouble I was having with the uh, Wii U edition. So I'm going to give it another shot, and I'm definitely looking forward to finding out more information. The next thing that I feel pretty confident that we're going to either learn about or see at E3 is at the very least an announcement for Borderlands 3. I'm hoping this will come with a trailer. It would be miraculous if it came with some kind of gameplay, but let's not get too far ahead of it. Either way though, Borderlands is a series I have been really excited about and that I have championed since the first game. I still vividly remember going into the local Walmart with my brothers and for some unfathomable reason the Canadian Walmart we went into actually had this game on sale for $40 and we all bought copies on day one and went home and we had an absolute riot. I haven't had as much exposure to the games that came afterward. There were multiple reasons for that but I do still love this series and I would definitely love to take some time and play another version of it. The next thing that I'm fairly confident that we are going to see is some Fallout news from Bethesda. I believe that there is a project called Fallout 76 and from what I've heard the key thing about that is that there's going to be a heavy emphasis on multiplayer aspect which could be really interesting or which could be really weird. Considering that Bethesda's main track record is with storytelling and with deeply involved single-player games. It's definitely an interesting angle for them, but they are a competent studio and I'm not going to count them out simply because this isn't what I'm necessarily used to from them. A lot of people are mistakenly correlating this with Elder Scrolls Online, but we have to remember that Elder Scrolls Online is not actually made by a key Bethesda team. That it's a different studio entirely that works on that project. So, I'm going to reserve judgment until I find out more details and most likely until I try Fallout 76 for myself. And for now, I'm just going to remain optimistic. I'm also hoping from Bethesda that we will see information on a new Elder Scrolls. I don't necessarily know whether we're going to be guaranteedly getting information on that, but it could be Elder Scrolls 6 that we see. Or it could be that we are going to get a Skyrim 2. I've heard rumors about that, and that's very interesting. It also reminds me that I really need to buy Skyrim 1. I've had it before for several consoles, but I've just never had the time to really sit down with it, and I think my best bet would probably be to get it on PC. Anyway, we're getting off topic, so let's move along. The last thing that I'm fairly confident that we're going to see, and that this is a big one for me, and I really want to see this, is I'm hoping that we're going to see more information on the possibility of a new Fable from Microsoft and one of their developers. I really love the Fable series. I was really into that series when I had a 360. And I've really missed that series, so it's a shame that Lionhead does not really exist anymore, 
But I don't necessarily think that means that Fable has to be dead and gone. I think it could be interesting to see what someone else could do with the property. And I am optimistic from the research that I've conducted that it's very possible we will see something related to this because I think that an RPG would be a really good fit for Microsoft. I think that it's a gap that is sorely missing in their portfolio. And depending on whether they bring it to PC or whether they strictly put it on Xbox One, this is actually something that if they make it and it does well, would potentially compel me to buy their system, which is something I have avoided doing ever since the whole controversy when they were trying to change how games were distributed and whether they could be resold several years ago. All right, now that we've talked about the things that I think we're going to see, we're next going to look at the games that I would like to see that seem possible, but that I don't have as much concrete theorizing or evidence to back up the idea that they will be present. The first of these games that I'm going to talk about is the idea of a Pokemon Switch. I'm very aware that there is a Pokemon game in development for the Switch. I haven't gone and looked at the trailer for that yet. I've heard mixed comments from friends, and the fact that they're saying it kind of reminds them of Pokemon Go has me very leery because with my disabilities, I have a lot of trouble getting out and about, and with the way the Switch is designed, while I know it can be taken on the go, I'm not sure how comfortable I would be with that with my situation when I do eventually get a Switch for myself. However, the rumors I've also heard going around are that there is a strong possibility that there will be a Pokemon game from the Pokemon Company or Game Freak or whatever you actually want to call the people who make the actual games. So that's really interesting, and I think that it would be a fantastic fit for the Switch. I think that the idea of having a Pokemon game that can be taken on the go, but that can be also be enjoyed on a large screen, is going to appeal to a much wider audience. As somebody who has visual problems, the idea that I can actually finally play a true Pokemon game on my television is amazing, and is something that I would really like to see happen and that I would really be looking forward to. Come on, Nintendo, make it happen. The next thing that I want to talk about, and I kind of forgot to put this one under the first category because I'm pretty sure we're going to see something about it, is that there is supposed to be a full-fledged Fire Emblem game for the Switch. Yes, please. I started my Fire Emblem adventure with Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, which was a game for the GameCube. And I really like these kind of games on the larger screen for the same reasons I just described with Pokemon. I like being able to see better and stuff like that. I understand that they work excellent as a handheld experience and with the Switch the nice thing as I've said before is that we can get both camps comfortable, settled, and happy. So yes please yet again Fire Emblem has been having a fantastic renaissance of excellent games and it would be nice to see another game with full like TV integration be added to that roster. The next thing that I'd like to see is something that could be brought forward by EA, who actually have their conference this afternoon. Hey, EA, I really want to know what the hell is going on with Dragon Age. Are we getting a Dragon Age 4? Are we getting something else in the meantime set in the Dragon Age um, world in general? It's been a while. The last game was 2014. We're in 2018 now. What the heck is going on? I realize that Mass Effect had some serious problems. That doesn't necessarily mean that Dragon Age is having those issues as well. And if it is, you need to make that clear to the fans because there are many of us who are still waiting to see what's going to happen next. Dragon Age is one of my favorite franchises and I really want to know what the future of the series is going to be. Another series I really love, and one that I'm actually revisiting right now in my spare time, is Bioshock. I've heard a few rumors that there is going to be a new Bioshock, and if that is true, I would love to see information on that be presented at E3, because it's been a while since we got a new Bioshock. Bioshock is a fantastic franchise, and it's past due, and we really need one. The last game that I want to talk about as a potential presence at E3 is any and all information Nintendo could give us on the announcement of a new Animal Crossing game. I'm very aware that Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is doing exceptionally well 
on the mobile systems that it has been placed on, but that does not mean in any way that it should be a permanent replacement for a proper addition to the Animal Crossing series. Animal Crossing is a beloved franchise and there are many people who don't necessarily play on their phones or who prefer the idea of playing on a larger screen who would definitely benefit from another proper installment. Lastly, we're going to talk about two games that are on my personal where has it been and why can't I have another one list. These are my crazy offshoots for E3. They're probably not going to make any kind of an appearance, but since they're two games that I would really love to see have continuations, I'm going to talk about them here. The first one is Viva Pinata, which is a Microsoft property. I, be I believe it was originally made by Rare. And I really love both of the Viva Pinata games. The first one was just really cute, charming, and fun in general. And the second one made all of that even better by incorporating a rich multiplayer experience. Viva Pinata had bright colors, memorable characters, great music, and a fun, interesting set of like ideas for people to interact with that are very different than most games that you see in the current gaming landscape. Hey Microsoft, you want something to diversify your portfolio? Bring us another Viva Pinata. If you brought another Viva Pinata and the Fable game that I listed earlier in this video, the chances of me actually purchasing your console would increase probably 500 fold because those are two things that I would really love to have. The other thing that I would really love to have, and this one is for you, Nintendo, along with Intelligent Systems, is a new Advance War game. Hey, where is it? This franchise is fantastic. I really love it. I was really into Dual Strike, and then I really enjoyed Days of Ruin. I understand that the style of Days of Ruin was very different than the first three Advance Wars games, and that potentially it didn't sell as well as the originals. I don't understand, however, why you didn't just decide to go back to the more cartoony, bright, and vibrant style if the more dark and post-apocalyptic design did not work. The idea that we haven't seen a game in this franchise in probably a good seven to nine years, I'm not sure exactly what year Days of Ruin came out, is absolutely appalling because while it's similar in scope to Fire Emblem, it has its own nuances and its own design and its own quirks that make it stand out. I know a lot of people would probably really enjoy checking it out, especially with the amount of popularity that Fire Emblem has brought to this general genre within your console space. It's an opportunity for you to actually create another continuation to a franchise that would likely get you a lot of sales. So why don't you think about it? Because I think it'd be really cool. Anyway, those are my top wish list items for E3 2018. What are you guys looking forward to? What do you want to see on the show floor or at the conferences? I'd love to know, so please feel free to leave a comment about this and we can discuss this in more detail. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click that subscribe button. If you want to make sure that you always get new content from me, also take the time to click the notification bell because that's how YouTube decides what to show you. Anyway, it's time for me to get ready to check out E3 with my friends, so I will talk to all of you later. Bye!